Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be going over Powell's speech, what happened yesterday, some of the threats that we see coming up for the possible rally tomorrow, and just kind of giving you the levels to watch for tomorrow. So without further ado, let's dive into what happened today. Well, if you look at the chart, a whole lot of nothing. We went up a bit, we went down a bit, and we're basically closing at the close of the previous day. S&P was up 0.05%, so pretty much a whole lot of nothing. NASDAQ up 0.2%, a little bit better. Russell up 0.5%. It was the strongest out of all the indexes out there today. Volume was, again, a little anemic on the S&P. The NASDAQ, similar story, anemic volume, along with the Russell having less volume on this way up, which we will be talking about why that is a concern in just a moment. But first, we got to go over Powell coming out. He came out, he basically gave a couple comments. He was on a panel with Christine Lagarde. So Lagarde gave a couple comments, Powell gave a couple comments. It wasn't really a big market moving event. The market really just didn't. It said, hey, Powell's here, going to give us more of the same. And I was keen to what he was saying market may not so much so that's why i have the title of the video the market's basically saying we don't believe you and what do they not believe what did he say that they're saying we don't believe you and that's pretty much simple i don't see us getting back to two percent this year or the next i see us making progress so what does that mean it means no rate cuts similar going back to if you guys remember his comment from the previous fomc meeting that participants don't see rate cuts in 2024 even possibly so again this forecast this crazy forecast that we're going to get rate cuts this year is so out of what the fed is seeing now fair warning we could get rate cuts when the economy falls off the dang cliff you'll get your rate cuts this year or next year but again, until we get to their 2% target defined by PC or core PC on trajectory to that target, which we get Friday, basically that is going to be on the situation we're in. We're going to keep hiking. And he also said that he doesn't rule out two consecutive rate hikes. We believe there is more restrictions coming driven by the labor market. That was another thing. And then, you know, Lagarde kind of jumped on. I'm not considering rate pause at the moment. So that started off more hawkish. And he really tried to get more of a hawkish um, bravado, as I would say. But he really didn't. He didn't have the whole Jackson Hole style speech that he had. And we also got the Fed stress test. Now, there's 23 banks. So they selected 23 banks. Could be cherry picked a little bit. But let's hypothetically say that the was sampled at random and we have 23 banks and the stress test remained above minimal capital requirements in the worst case scenario okay but minimal capital requirements and not going bk is two different things because remember you can be above um, minimum capital requirements but still not operate because your stock went to zero and you have no collateral to go against we saw that with frc frc was allowed to basically stay afloat but their shareholders and um bank holders basically said, hey, we're not sticking around. And you saw the result of that. So 23 banks survived the test. Um, they had a collective loss of 541 billion in the hypothetical severe recession. And again, guys, I keep going back to this until I'm blue in the face, is that the yield curve is basically coming and trying to retest all time highs. So this has been since 1969, the predictor of every single recession, downturn, correction, whatever you wanna call it. This thing inverts, we get a massive, massive crank. And just to put it in perspective, the white line was the 2008 bubble, the dot com was 0.0. So bad things basically happen when we get above these levels. And right now we're basically nearing all time highs. So if you were a stock trader and basically trade stocks as a get to all time highs, get blue sky breakout, well, you'd be pretty bullish on this move. So you don't necessarily want to be bullish on the yield curve inversion going to new all time highs just because well, it kind of spells bad things for you, especially a lot of bad things happening. Everyone remembers 1978, which was the 24% crash in the market that basically was the Black Tuesday or famous Wolf of Wall Street, any kind of movie that revolves around that type of things. So again, we have to be cautious when we get to this level. And if you guys are enjoying the video so far, possibly consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps us out. And throw a comment what you like, what you didn't like, kind of give us your feedback or wait till the end of the video to see the whole content. We really do appreciate your comments and possibly hit a like on the video. It really helps fight the good fight against the YouTube algorithm. So again, thank you so much for your support. 
But again, what are the threats for us the following day? And that's pretty much gonna be GDP and Powell talking. So Powell could come out and give us some more hawkish news. He was really trying to be hawkish, but again, the market doesn't believe him. And why do I say the market doesn't believe him? Well, quickly jumping over to the Fed CME tool, and you guys, this will be linked down in the description below. You can pull it up. It's a really good tool to understand what the analysts are thinking, and kind of this is what I consider price into the market. Right now, we only have one rate hike price in the market and possible cuts at 21% and possible another hike at 21%. So basically no two rate hikes, no three rate hikes even price into the market. So therefore, if the data keeps coming the way it is with PC on Friday, we're definitely going to have some turmoil in the market. And Powell did today say he is not ruling out one two rate hikes to two consecutive rate hikes. So you're not going to get the pause hike, pause hike. You're just going to get hike, hike. Or you may be in such a bad situation, you may get the crazy, let's jump 50 basis points. I don't think that scenario plays out because they know something's breaking. Powell is scared, in my opinion, to raise rates because they know they're going to break something. They're looking at this and they basically say, okay, GDP 1.4. If this comes in anything sub one, it's flurrying with negative numbers the next quarter, which is Q2, which we get around Q3 around September, when a lot of these regional banks, I do believe in Q2 reports, are going to see some carnage. I'll be pretty surprised in the here. I'm okay to be wrong. I'll admit when I'm wrong, but I do think the regional banks have more pain ahead. Warren Buffett has said he thinks another leg is going to drop and the guy's been around investing longer than I've been alive. So again, listen to people that have been around the block and especially know and have basically results. So again, we got Bostick speaking, not a big market mover. Again, core PC expect to come in flat along with the month over month and an increase in the year over year number. Remember, the year over year number is the volatile. This, if the Fed looks at this, basically means that they're not doing enough and they may have to do more. I think CPI, if it starts ticking up, the Fed's really going to have to ratchet back up to more consecutive rate hikes and possibly even more than 25 basis points. But again, I think he's really trying to stick to that 25 basis point hike is just what the terminal rate's going to be. And when does the market start repricing that? If we look at the market today, it's basically a range bound day. I told you guys yesterday that until we get back above that 438.37 level, don't start playing the bullish train because this is a doji candle. It means indecision. We basically had a gap down, push up, broke the highs. So we had a breakout from the previous day, failed to hold below the previous day's high. However, we are above the close of the day. So there is more bullish sentiment or bullish skew in the market versus bear skew in the market. So again, we have to be cautious, but I remember 438.37 and 432.47 is your numbers to pay attention to until we get a rotation from one of these. If we start coming back down towards this level, I may be looking to for a break of this and playing the break all the way down to the 430 to 428.58 level. That's where I'd be looking to see more price appreciation in the market with the NASDAQ. We're in a tighter range on the NASDAQ, so that means that we have more susceptibility to the breakdown lower or higher. We closed at the day's highs from yesterday above the close again. So we are starting to see that possible rotation, but again, we could be A to B, B to C, like on the way up, or A, A to B, B to C, like on the way down. So nothing has necessarily played out, and I don't think you're gonna get that to play out until you start breaking these outer ranges here. We could have a consolidation week, and honestly, going sideways is bullish. You're basically not getting the price to for the bulls to buy in, so they're gonna have to pay a higher premium, which then pushes the market up higher, and then you have the bears that don't get to close out their position for a net zero, they have to take a loss. So again, sideways action is bullish. We've seen that pretty much historically here. Sideways action, bullish. Sideways action, down, bullish. Sideways action, bullish. Sideways action, bullish. So again, if you see a lot of even here, sideways action, bearish, but then followed by a bullish rally. And any like one of these dips, dip, and then rock it up. Dip, rock it up. Dip, kind of rocketing up right now, but I'm not totally convinced just because the volume has been pretty anemic at this level. So we have to look at some of the leaders and we're gonna quickly run through them just to give you guys a sense. Apple, pretty much strong, pushing ahead, hasn't broken this uptrend. 
Microsoft consolidating around this level, but could be forming possibly head and shoulders here. So we have to pay attention or be on the warning signs for that. But then I'd be looking at the 50 day moving average as an area that I might want to buy. Microsoft or play the bullish side of it, maybe come back for this gap fill to the downside. So again, come down, retest, bounce off, head higher. That would be pretty bullish for Microsoft, especially because you fill this gap, you really don't have a lot of threat of the gap fill and then rotate higher, especially finding support on one of your moving averages. Goog, bounce off the 50, nice move today. Gap down, defended it, pushed up. This is definitely looking bullish. Now the first test probably gonna be at that 123 area. If we continue higher, or do we come back and retest the 50 daily for that A to B pattern on the way up and come back to fill this gap over here. So again, just be cautious of that. NVIDIA, the king of all chips, as we're heading higher, this gap I don't think fills until earnings. I think a lot of people have basically said that. And right now, if we look at it, we do have a trend line to the upside that basically is going to be our support. So until we break this trend line, I don't wouldn't be looking for downward prices. Could form that head and shoulders basically here as a sideways, but you got to be cautious that NVIDIA is pretty strong. You are consolidating in this area, so you definitely could get that rip up. But then again, you have some selling pressure here. And my favorite index to pay attention to now is the Russell. So Russell is trying, keyword trying to invalidate this pattern, but it is struggling around this area. It's not really finding that balance that I would expect it to, but we could get a strong move. However, the Russell, if it doesn't pretty much break this upper consolidation here of the 188 mark in the next week or so, I definitely be looking for that head and shoulders to play out it's a pretty obvious bearish pattern on the Russell. And the Russell is pretty surprisingly only up a very small percentage compared to the rest of the market. If we look at 2023, roughly, we're looking at it's only up 7.59%. So Russell kind of lagging behind all the markets. And then again, as we all talk about these regional banks, they are consolidating on the 50. You played around the 50 day moving average on KRE for quite some time. You don't have two candle basic closes in my opinion above this level you got your first close today here the second kind of but it's i don't like how it's basically violating this area so i want to see that volume come in and start pushing up higher if we fail to hold this area and keep basically breaking through it on a daily basis i definitely could see some more bearish action especially with the stress report showing massive losses in the banking sector it doesn't give a lot of people encouragement that if you get that recession which the bond market is basically screaming at you that you're going to get you could see more downside in the regional banks especially if pce comes out bloody or gdp comes out lower than expected I definitely could see carnage in the sectors so we just have to be cautious about these things we don't necessarily have to base our whole trading strategy off of it so again play it how the chart is if this starts ripping up you play the regional banks bullish if it starts ripping down you play them bearish it's pretty simple we did fill this gap back here so again they don't have a gap fill but you definitely have the possible rotation to the downside on the regional banks and that could definitely drag the s p down lower but yet again just to recap for everyone 438 37 is where i go bullish in the market 442 47 is where i go bearish in the market anything in between you pretty much sit on your hands and then if it breaks above or below that level depending or comes right back through it then you know where your stop loss needs to be placed and then for the nasdaq basically 360 and 368 32 is where i'd be looking for the bullish and bearish levels so again until we break those levels, I wouldn't be necessarily playing the market. I'm personally not playing the market right now just because I want to see how all this GDP and PC and PAL shakes out. And just to give you guys a preview of what next week could have in store for us, we definitely could be in for a doozy. We have ISM Manufacturing. Tuesday is a holiday Independence Day, so market won't be trading. Wednesday, we basically have factory orders, and then we get ADP non-farm payrolls. So the following week is job numbers jolts on Thursday, and then our hourly earnings on Friday. So again, we definitely could see some interesting data for that the Fed is going to be considered. Are we getting a cooling in the labor market? And again, just a friendly reminder that this week, we on Thursday today, you guys get initial jobless claims at 8.30. So that, let's see if they're expecting at 2.66, previous 2.64. Do we get the 2.70? Do we start getting the acceleration in the jobless claims to when the market starts deteriorating? When I say market, I mean the economy. 
the, when the economy starts deteriorating because jobs usually have a pretty quick acceleration going into the recession slash crash. So we have to keep an eye on that. And remember, the market is in a very unstable point just because VIX is basically nearing or going sideways. We definitely have the capability to rip up higher and have a nice spike on VIX easily to that $23 level, which would be an absolute monster spike right now of 69%. So again, we have to be cautious of VIX. VIX has a tendency to add spikes on this area, and we really haven't had anything spook the market. Could PC or GDP spook the market tomorrow? We have to find out and basically see how it all plays out. So I thank you all for watching and hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you all here for Viewer Request Ticker Friday tomorrow.